Welcome to the Captain Crow Show. Today we're going to share with you some delightful tips and tricks for Pokemon Legends Arceus. For starters, do the Strange Ponyta side quest for a free shiny Ponyta. Shinies are difficult to come by as it is, and typically a feature not really discussed or presented directly in a Pokemon game, so their continued focus on shiny variants in newer games is rather intriguing. Instead, they opted to give you a quest pointing out a strange Ponyta, which I had honestly hoped was a Galarian variant, but was surprised to find that it genuinely was a Ponyta with blue flames. You get this quest fairly early on in town, so be sure to pick them up and do them frequently. Completing the side quest will often unlock further side quests. On that note, side quests give you a ton of bonuses. Make sure to do as many as you can and look forward to more helpful guides like this on some more tedious ones. It's generally advised that you complete all the side quests to eventually to get the fullest extent of the game and from what we found so far, finishing the Pokedex and getting a shiny charm will have massive bonuses for your chance to get a shiny. Use the crafting station at the camp because they're the only ones that will take into account what's actually in your storage and the one in town does not. Maybe this will be patched, hopefully. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but going back to town constantly is a complete drag and seems pointless other than a midway point between your travels, which also just becomes cumbersome. So unless you have quests to turn in or rank to bump up, just don't even bother. The shop is even accessible from the camp. It took me a while to notice it, but there's a farm in the town. Level up the farm by completing quests for easy farmable berries and apricots. The quests are super easy and unlock in phases, but I had all of them ready to go because it took me so long to notice the area off to the side uh, from how little I actually wanted to wander the town. They mostly consist of donating certain types of Pokemon. I believe the ground type was first, water type second, and the third was a Pokemon that could use Rock Smash. Keep in mind that you will no longer have these Pokemon after this, so don't choose one of your main party Pokemon. Backshots are your friend. You can even take advantage of a Pokemon breaking out of a Pokeball to nail a good backshot with a heavy ball or heavier. The best ones are if you can get them to face away from you with some food they actually like and will eat, giving you the green icon indicating it's at its easiest state to catch and nailing a backshot. It's almost an absolute chance to catch it, unless of course it's an alpha. Too many Pokemon to keep track of? Release some! You'll actually be rewarded with stat increase items and more for releasing a bunch of duplicates that you don't need to hang on to. Keep in mind though, random quests come up requesting a variety of Pokemon all the time as mentioned previously, so it's always good to hang on to a few of each type. Alpha Pokemon are more than worth catching. Not only will you get extra money, but extra research points as well as still getting the EXP candy that it drops when you defeat it. If you can't seem to catch it without making it faint, you have a choice to make. You can simply defeat it and wait for it to respawn or leave the area and come back to force the spawn or you can just run away and come back after correcting your team. Each option is involved and time consuming in its own way but for improving your rank there is no other point value that compares. Check back with the trainer in town frequently after getting your survey rank up for new moves. Pokemon don't seem to learn widespread moveset naturally in this game, so the trainer is actually invaluable. She offers a wide variety of not only strong moves that match your Pokemon type, but various others that are tactically beneficial. Once a Pokemon learns a move, it will never forget it and you can swap it out as often as you like. Only the moves equipped will gain mastery, however, and remember that swapping them in the field without resting will result in the available PP being half of the max. Save your money for moves and bag space. Bag space is so damn expensive you'll need every penny, whereas the moves are somewhat more affordable since most people tend to build a specific team and stick with it, you really only have to pay for the moves on those Pokemon once, but the farther you get in the game the more invaluable the bag space becomes. The wider variety of items you can pick up as you progress will take up even more spaces and leave you pulling your hair out if you don't shell out hundreds of thousands to this guy, and that may not even be the end of it. I still haven't hit cap and I'm not sure if there is one. Stuck in a precarious situation? You can always run! Running allows you to break from the battle, though the wild Pokemon will still pursue you, giving you enough time to heal your party up or hopefully escape the Pokemon. That said, choose your battles carefully. If the Pokemon in the area are the same level as the ones in your party, you probably don't want to challenge that alpha. Alphas are usually 10 to 15 levels higher than the surrounding areas, and in some cases in the later part of the game I found them to be up to 30 levels higher, and they know some good moves. 9 times out of 10 they will get the first attack, if not the first 2 attacks, and they will use moves your Pokemon is weak to, so be careful, watch where you're going, and go for backshots. 
Want to evolve that onyx but can't find the metal coat to do it with? Go find other players' bags and return them to earn merit points which allow you to purchase some of the more difficult to find items. This may seem time consuming and tedious, but there are usually a lot around and you can actually combine these trips with going after new species of Pokemon that you need to work on for your Pokedex entries anyway. And by the time you locate enough bags to get an item, you'll probably have a good chunk of research to turn in and save yourself some time grinding. I find this to be the most efficient method and use of my time to accomplish both of these tasks, as completing the Pokedex entries will require some additional evolution items at times, but don't forget that the time space anomalies also have a chance that the item you want will drop in them. The time space anomalies are always worth checking. Even if you are too low a level to challenge the powerhouses that spawn, it's fairly easy to dodge them and pick up all the items. Well, that's it for any tips or tricks we had. If you think we missed anything, please let us know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. This has been your tips and tricks in Pokemon Legends Arceus with the Captain Crow Show. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content.